What is good, everyone? This is your host, Deanna Radulescu with Label Free Podcast. To live your best life, you must live label free. As always, bring you incredible guests from all over the world. So sit back, relax, and tune in. My next guest is actually one of my favorite type of people. He is a U.S. Marine veteran. He is also a master personal trainer who has lost 100 pounds after getting sober, sober. And now his life mission is to help men and veterans become strong again. Please welcome Kyle Perry. Kyle, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Thank you for being here. Um, so what was your like wake up call to lose 100 pounds? Because that's quite a bit of weight. So I've had two. Um, the, so my story is uh, I've always been a big drinker, but when you're in the military, it's not hard to stay in shape because you're PT so much. Well, uh, when I got out, I became very successful in the corporate world. I was the youngest plant manager on paper of a chemical or phosphate company. At 25 to 26 years old, I was running a 90,000 square foot building, just hard charging as fast as I could in the corporate world when I got out. Um, but that's a very stressful life. You work at 50, 60, 70 hours a week. And just like the military, when you get stressed out, you drink. And before you know it, I kind of gave up on fitness because the corporate world was making me so much money. I actually got canceled on TikTok one time. That's what made me get off of all the social medias. It's a long story. Um, okay. so, they, so sorry for another time. I like that, right? <laughs> um, so then I wake up one day and I'm like, I just don't feel like I'm fulfilling a purpose anymore. When most people, when they get to the corporate world, they make $100,000 a year. They think they made it. But I'm here to tell you, I know this is very cliche, is that money is not what buys you your happiness and it's not what finds you your purpose. So I was depressed, not really depressed. I was just anxious all the time. Wasn't really fulfilling my purpose. So I said, I need to make a change. So got back into fitness, got back on my grind. But what really started is uh, like two years ago, I had got so drunk. My wife found me on my basement steps, like pretty much drowning in my puke. I was so drunk. Oh, And uh, I used to think because I wasn't on drugs like my friends that it wasn't an issue because my best friend died at 21 from the same thing, but from drugs. Um, and I've had a lot of friends that are dead from drugs. So I didn't think mine was as bad because alcohol is legal. So they paint you the picture that it's not that bad for you. Um, so that was my biggest wake up call. And then I had one more where I had a really physical altercation where I really thought I did some damage to this guy. And I thought I was going to prison for a long time. Um, and that was the day I was like, I'm never drinking again. And I just, yeah. and I've sent that point in my life mission is to show everyone, especially right now, if you go to my Instagram and keep scrolling down, you'll see because there's the posts are still relevant. I was a hundred pounds overweight drinking, celebrating like what I was talking about. It was pretty like off the wall for someone that should be uh, ma someone that was making that kind of money. Shouldn't be living the life I was living, but I still was because the place I'm from, I mean, you, you can become a product of your environment if you let it. So I'm just here to show everyone you're not a product of your environment. You're a product of your mindset. So that's how I went down this road. So a couple of questions. And so, it does, you don't become that bad overnight drinking like that. So that would like, it had to have been like a progression to get to that point. And there had to be something in your life that, you know, I, like from what I've experienced and what I've witnessed is that you're self-medicating to get away from. And so was that the high stress job in corporate? Were you just not fulfilled there that you felt like that was your escape or what was like, did you ever figure out the reason behind, you know, turning to alcohol so much? I was just stressed out and didn't like my life. So, you know, you got to numb your feelings when you're, when you feel like you're successful, but in real life, you don't like yourself, you just numb your feelings. And that's what my whole mentorship's about. When I coach people is like, I try to tell them that you're numbing your feelings. You're not happy. And especially with alcoholics or addicts, um, there's this thing that happens in your brain where you don't feel normal until you use that medicine or that, that alcohol. So they think they feel normal when they're drinking, but the only reason they feel like that, because they program their brain that way. Interesting. And so what does that mean? I've never heard anyone say that before. So you don't feel like yourself until you actually use that, that substance. I actually, I go to this podcast that I watch. Um, they do something kind of like mine. It's called uh, the Hopeaholics. And I learned that the other day, cause I've never been to any type of AA meetings myself. I did this all on my own and then I just help other people do it. But he, he was talking about there's something that subconsciously happens in the back of your brain. And when you drink or you do a drug for long enough, your brain cannot operate like properly without it. So now your norm is that drug. That's why if you see someone on like a really strong drug, you sometimes you can't even tell, even though they're on it every day because that's, that became their baseline norm. I've seen that. I had a girlfriend a long time ago in my early twenties and she was a little bit older than me then who was, she had 
like a thing, like a contact case, always in her bra of cocaine. And like she just did it every day, all day long, throughout the day, like bump, bump, bump here and there. And I like I could never understand. I could never understand how she could function like that. I was just like, oh, my God. But that was her baseline, like you said. And so that makes sense. Um, well, good for you for getting some help and or not getting help, but turning yourself around. I think that that takes a very strong individual to figure out that they needed to turn things around for themselves and do it on their own because not everybody can do that. They can. And the thing I try to preach the most is there's more addicts in the world than we think, but it's food because they think because it's not a drug or, or an alcohol that they don't have an addiction, but they do. If you're eating your emotions away, that's a form of addiction. It just doesn't seem as serious because you're not doing the crazy actions, but you're still killing yourself slowly and treating the people around you poorly because of how you feel internally. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with that. Like, that's just, I don't know. So as you started losing it, so how long did it take you to lose the hundred pounds? Um, oh, it's been almost a year now. Oh yeah. That's so I started it a year and a half ago, but I took it very serious within a year. It's been a whole year. So. Wow. Congratulations. How do you feel today? I feel amazing. I'm, I am tell everyone I'm, I just turned 30. I'll be 31 this year. And, um, I feel better than when I was 20. It's a lot, a lot of it has to do obviously with not drinking because I've been drinking since I was like 17, but, uh, is the mental clarity you have from taking your life serious is on a whole nother level. Um, and like, I've been getting my mission out there for a while and I had dinner with like Andy Frisella, Birdman, and I've met DJ off of the, uh, MFCO podcast. Uh, I've done a lot of cool things in the last couple of months just because I've been getting my mission out there. And like, I, I had a mentor, his name is Wes Watson. He's really big on yeah. Instagram. Yeah. He's introduced me to some really big people in the last couple of months that I never even thought possible. I love Andy Priscilla. I love his no bullshit, no holes barred way of like coming at life, you know, and him, I, I listen to his podcast and I think it's just amazing. So how was it to meet him? It was like the most surreal feeling ever. Um, cause, well, first I got to watch him speak on stage, and then I got to go to a private dinner with him. And it's like, you don't realize how how these guys, they function just like you see on the internet. A lot of people think it's a facade or like they're these, you, you'll see the negative comments out there. Yeah. But he's the largest in life when you meet him. Sure. Um, I, he t- I told him my story. He said, like, I met with DJ. DJ followed me back on Instagram. He gave me some good connections when it comes to veterans. So if you put yourself out there and like, I just talked to Brad Lee the other day on Instagram and I told him I wanted it on his podcast and he said, send me, send me an email, I'll forward it to my team. If you just take your life serious and you tell your life story, you can change so many things in your life, but you just have to put it out there. Beautiful. I love that. So let's talk about you being a coach and personal trainer and helping men and veterans. So why specifically men and veterans? So I will coach anyone and my wife's a fitness coach. So if women like my aggressiveness, they can come to me also. But I just know my aggressiveness speaks volume to men and veterans. When it comes to people that have been through extreme traumas or extreme life situations, are they like, let's say they grew up in like a very, like kind of like ghetto place like I did. You, you relate to that extremeness because your life was extreme. So if I come on camera and I'm like, hey guys, this is what a macro does. If you do it, you'll lose weight. They don't care. They're not going to listen. You have to be able to talk like deep into their soul and let them know like they're failing their kids. They're failing their wife. They're failing at life as a man. And that conversation right there, like, yeah, I might strike a hundred people that get mad at me, but that one person that messages with me that day to change their life, that's all it's, that's all that's important to me. Yeah. You're, I love your intensity. So I, I think I followed you on Instagram too, before this, before we started recording and I was like, yeah. I'm all about it. Let's go. I would like it. I would like that aggressiveness because I'm aggressive. So like I, I resonate with that. And I've had a lot of trauma in my life too, but we're talking about you today, not me. <laughs> so I think that it's great. I love, I love the intensity. The intensity is like, it, it fires me up. So yeah, I'm sure some people that would not resonate with them very well. Yeah. I, I mean, I get a lot of hateful comments, especially on TikTok. But the thing is, if you, if you vibrate at a high enough level, negativity cannot affect you. I just, say something positive back to them. I even go into comments of positive posts where people say negative things and I argue their narrative. And a lot of them will follow me and like, thank you. Like I really needed to wake up. 
And like people think people make this up. So if anyone ever wants to message me on Instagram, I will show them screenshots of people that leave negative comments and I change their way of thinking because we need more people like me or like you that talk about no labels that hold people accountable because no one holds anyone accountable anymore. And that's why everything's off to the wayside. Oh gosh, it's ridiculous. I mean, I, I, I don't recognize the world that we live in from what I was like growing up or even like 10 years ago. It's just so bizarre. And I think, you know, obviously, I mean, I think we can both agree that COVID had a big part in that. And I, I feel like that was part of their propaganda, though. You know, they really, they did all that. There's Teddy. Teddy wants to come into the picture. I think they did all that. And it was very calculated the way they caused, 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 I can't speak, so much division between people. And so, yeah, no, we're, we're on the same page there. Do you have, besides yourself? Um, a, su a success story of someone that you've worked with that maybe was in a really bad spot and you tur helped turn their life around, not only physically, but mentally as well. Yeah, I actually have a bunch of extreme success stories. Uh, normally, if someone reaches out to me and they kind of like are on the fence about signing up, I'll kind of bring that out. So my most success story, biggest success story I have, and I give this guy a shout out all the time. He actually ended up becoming one of my best friends. He was one of my very first clients. And now me and his wife and his kids were all really close. And uh, his name's Anthony Davis. He owns AID Remodeling. If anybody in Ohio needs their house remodeled or anything like that. Uh, he started off as a normal worker when he came to me and he was overweight. He was drinking. He was like not treating his family correctly. He was he was that same person I was like, hey, baby, not tonight. I'm tired. Like, And that, that voice still was in my head that I told my kids that. Because everyone will get up early for work, but they won't get up early for their kids. And um I took him from, his wife always says, I took him from a homeless man to an underwear model. He's extremely peeled now. And not only did he leave his job just doing normal construction, he opened up his own business. And I have screenshots of me making him $140,000 since he left my program through his construction business. Wow. wow. So you said that if someone is hesitant to open up to you, you can kind of get them there. So how do you go about doing that, especially as a man to another man? Because I think that like, you know, especially men more than women have barriers like, oh, I got to be a man, you know, <laughs> like I'm not going to talk about it. And I think once you can start like you, you can penetrate that wall, it, you can be very effective. So can you tell us a little bit about how you do that? So, you know, anybody listening to the audience might be like, hmm, I think I want to go work with him. <laughs> start with stuff like this, me getting on camera and telling my vulnerableness and my weakness and showing people that I struggled just like them and that. I know if, you, if anyone watches my content, like I tell people like, hey, stop being fat. Hey, stop doing this. Stop doing that. And then I say, I can say that to you because that was me. I'm you and I wake up to you every day, but I beat that. I beat that voice every morning. Every morning, I don't want to work out. I don't want to do the things I do. I want to go back to my vices. And I just tell myself, if I slip, the people underneath me fall. But I, I tell them all the time, if you don't make that change internally, I can't help you. You have to because I will pick apart what someone's asking me when I, they come into my messages. And if I don't think they can actually make the change, I'll say, hey, at this time, I really don't think I could be a beneficial factor in your life because you haven't internalized the change yet. And I could sell you a $10 million program, but if you don't internalize the change, you're not going to do it. Yeah, <clears throat> so true. I mean, it starts from within. Can you talk a little bit about how things were with you and your wife when you were struggling to where it is today? Or me and my wife have almost gotten a divorce because of it. Um, at one point in time, we kind of broke up. I moved out. Um, and then I messaged her. I said, hey, I want to talk. And I came in, sat down. And I said, I think we should take life as serious as possible. And I think we should fix this because I don't want to I don't want to be with anyone else. Like she's always been my best friend. But when you it's weird, we finally make it like this is when we were both making good money. But I was drinking a lot. You kind of give up on each other because you don't need to struggle with each other anymore. Yeah. So you don't you don't. It's weird because you think when you get to that point, it'll be easier, but it almost gets harder because you don't need to rely on each other for the struggle. Mm. So we started fighting more. And then I'm like, now she's like my best friend. If you guys watch my videos, she's doing burpees with me. She does this. She fitness coaches with me. And this year, like I'm retiring her from her normal job. So it was like a, it's a whole 360 degrees from what we were a year and a half ago. So that is beautiful. That is a testament right there. You guys like why, if you are in a bad place and struggling, you should reach out to Kyle and turn your life around because I think that is amazing. And so what does it look like if someone's okay, reaches out to you on Instagram, goes to your website, whatever, and says, hey, Kyle, I heard you on Label Free Podcast. I'm following you on Instagram. I think I would like to work with you. What does that look like when to get started with you? So pretty much they'll, message, they'll follow me on Instagram or just message me. I check my requests every day. 
Um, just tell me what you're struggling with. We'll talk about your struggles and I'll talk about your mindset and see where you need to go. Um, I have two separate type of packages. One's for like elite level business people that really need to like peel their whole life apart like an onion. Because I know business owners that make a million dollars a year that are dead broke because of their vices. So I have like a really high tier program. And then my mid tier program, you would come in, it's uh, $299 a month or $750 for three months. People think that's expensive, but I, I was on live the other day and I said, how much are you blowing on your vices? And this guy commented, me and my wife added up, we spent $1,100 a month on fast food. And I said, but you would be the same person that would come in and tell me you couldn't afford the $750. But in reality, I would save you $2,200 over that three months if you just broke your vices and then you would save $2,200 every three months. So I made you $10,000 more a year for you, a small investment of 750 bucks. Yeah. But that, I'm sorry, I'm, that's so gross. It's a lot of money. Now, I think if you think on top of that or smoke cigarettes or drink energy drinks, now you're at 15, two, then you know what I mean? There's so much money wasted out there and people think they can't make it, but they're just blowing. Yeah. Where can people find you, connect with you, and learn more on how to work with you, Kyle? So everything's directly through my Instagram. I don't ever want to look like a salesperson. I don't have a landing page. I don't have any of that. You just reach out to me, watch some of my videos, kind of understand my content before you, like kind of like when I send out to you guys, like, hey, my stuff's aggressive before I come on, do you accept this? Watch my videos, make sure you can even handle somebody with that type of aggression in your life. If not, you can always reach out to my wife. But my Instagram is Perry's underscore powerhouse underscore fitness. And if you're someone that needs something a little less extreme, you can find my wife all over my Instagram because that's one thing guys don't do anymore is hype their wife up. So I always give a shout out to. That's amazing. You guys, uh, yeah, he's n no bullshit. So if you're ready for some no bullshit in your life, which we all should be ready for no bullshit, like no nothing is sugarcoated. I'm going to put his links in the show notes. Go click the link, go reach out to him, go follow him on social and go reach out to him. Give, send him a message if you think that that would be a good fit for you and you need some help getting over your vices and becoming strong again. Kyle, this is the part of the show where I like to ask for less words of wisdom or advice. What would you like to leave with us today? If you listen to anything on any of this podcast, it's just start now. You have to start now. You can't start tomorrow. You can't start Monday. You can't start a week from now. You can't start after the holidays. You'll lose the motivation and you will never make it there. You need to internalize the change today. If you're overweight, if you, if you have vices, if you're smoking, if you're drinking, and you need to stop right now and start a new life today, not tomorrow. You need to prepack your lunch right now if you want to start weight loss for tomorrow while you have the motivation. That's how the change starts. Woo! Yeah, preach, my brother, preach. All right, Kyle, thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you for what you're doing and making an impact to those that need it from you. And uh, we, I, I love it. I'm like, I'm here for. It. I'm like a cheerleader in the background over here. Like, yeah, Kyle, kick, whip their ass in the shape. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being such a dynamic guest. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. You guys, this is your host, Deanna Radulescu with Label Free Podcast. To live your best life, you must live label free. As always, don't forget to subscribe, follow, rate, review, comment, share, all those good things. And I'll be back soon with more dynamic guests.